It's been a long time coming, but it's finally time to talk about the best defenders after the recent CP update. Unlike attackers, it's a little bit harder to rank defenders based on DPS, based on calculations alone, because you have to take a lot more into account. Because you don't actually get to control a defending Pokémon in battle, you have to consider other factors like how common its counters are, what people are going to be using against it, and how likely it is to use certain attacks or exhibit certain patterns in battle. To start, let's just look at the tankiest Pokémon. These are the Pokémon with the highest combined defense and HP stats, and they are Chansey, Snorlax, Lapras, Vaporeon, Rhydon, Muk, Tentacruel, Gyarados, Slowbro, and Golem. So if you just want your defender to survive as long as possible in battle, those are the top 10. But when defending, you also want your Pokémon to deal as much damage as possible. So once you factor damage in, the list looks very different. For defensive DPS, I calculated it the same way I did for attackers. It's the amount of time it takes for a full cycle. That's as many quick attacks as you need to fill up your stamina bar for one charge attack, and then using that one charge attack. So it's the amount of damage dealt over that entire cycle divided by the amount of time it takes. And remember, we add two seconds to every move's animation time for defenders. Now keep in mind, this isn't a 100% accurate way of ranking defenders, mainly because we can't control how defending Pokémon use their charge moves. The guys at GamePress figured out that when a defending Pokémon fills up its stamina bar, it will use its charge move 50% of the time. So whenever that bar is full, there's a 50% chance that the defending Pokémon uses its charge move. So even though one bar charge moves typically have higher DPS both on offense and on defense, on defense, multiple bar charge moves are usually preferred because they get used more often. You've probably noticed that when you're battling against, let's say, a defending Vaporeon, in one battle, it might use Hydro Pump once, maybe twice. But against a Vaporeon with Water Pulse, you're going to see that Water Pulse much more often than you would see Hydro Pump, which actually increases the move's DPS over the course of the battle. The more time spent using a charge move in battle is typically better for defending Pokémon. Hello? Where were we? So right now, I want to go over the list of best defenders when you're just looking at defensive DPS and tankiness. These are essentially the Pokémon who are going to deal the most damage before they faint as defenders. And again, just like with attackers, there is a percentage listed, and that tells you essentially how they compare to the best Pokémon on the list. First overall is Snorlax with Zen Headbutt and Hyper Beam. Second, and not far behind, Rhydon with Mud Slap and Earthquake, followed by Lapras with Ice Shard and Blizzard, then Rhydon with Mud Slap and Stone Edge, Lapras with Ice Shard and Ice Beam, Rhydon with Rock Smash and Earthquake, Dragonite with Steel Wing Dragon Pulse, Dragonite with Steel Wing Hyper Beam, Rhydon with Mud Slap Mega Horn, Snorlax with Zen Headbutt Earthquake, Snorlax with Zen Headbutt Body Slam, Rhydon with Rock Smash Stone Edge, Lapras with Ice Shard Dragon Pulse, finally, something different, Golem with Mud Slap and Earthquake, Polyrath with Bubble and Hydro Pump, Golem with Mud Slap and Stone Edge, Golem with Rock Throw and Earthquake, Executor with Confusion and Solar Beam, Rhydon again, Rock Smash Megahorn, Snorlax with Lick Hyper Beam, Dragonite with Steel Wing Dragon Claw, Golem with Rock Throw Stone Edge, Lapras Frost Breath Blizzard, Lapras Frost Breath Ice Beam, Dragonite, Dragon Breath Dragon Pulse, Executor, Confusion Psychic, Venusaur, Razor Leaf Solar Beam, Executor Zen Headbutt Solar Beam, Vaporeon, finally, Water Gun Hydro Pump, Slowbro with Confusion and Psychic, Dragonite with Dragon Breath Hyper Beam, Golem with Mud Slap Ancient Power, Lapras with Frost Breath Dragon Pulse, Exeggutor with Confusion Seed Bomb, and at this point we're already down to 63% efficiency. This, that last Pokemon is 63% as efficient as Snorlax with Zen Headbutt and Hyper Beam, so there really aren't a ton of different Pokemon at the top of the list here. But with that said, there are some very important things to consider, including type matchups, type advantage, type disadvantage, and how common certain counters are for these Pokémon. From this list, it seems like Rhydon would be a top-tier defender, but that's just not the case because it has double weakness to two relatively common types, water and grass. 
That double weakness means that any grass or water type attacks are going to deal 56% extra damage to Rhydon. And the same goes for Golem, who appears a little bit lower than Rhydon on the list. And because of how common Vaporeon tends to be, that knocks Rhydon down quite a bit as a defender. So even though it has the third highest CP in the game currently, and it's become very common in gyms, especially here in Southern California where Rhyhorn is fairly common, because of its crippling weaknesses, it's actually not a great defender, at least compared to other top tier defenders like Snorlax and Lapras. The same goes for Dragonite, who appears at the top of the list as well. It does have a double weakness to Ice-type. Now fortunately for Dragonite, Ice-type attackers aren't as common as Vaporeon, but with the recent buffs to Cloyster and the fact that you can farm one up if you're lucky enough to live near a water biome or a shelter nest, that means that Dragonite, again, isn't a top tier defender, but it is closer to the top than Rhydon. Now remember, this list, these rankings, are based on defensive DPS, but that's sort of a flawed way of looking at defenders. One important thing to consider is how often a Pokemon is going to use a charge move. So when you're looking at Snorlax, for example, Zen Headbutt and Hyper Beam does deal the most DPS out of all its defensive movesets, but Zen Headbutt and Body Slam, even though it's about 15% less efficient, is often ranked as just as good as a defensive moveset. There are two main reasons for that. One, Body Slam is going to be used a lot more often, and two, Body Slam is much harder to dodge than Hyper Beam. As you should know by now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, to successfully dodge an attack, you just swipe left or right within 0.7 seconds of seeing the yellow warning flash. That flash appears at different times for different moves. Some appear very close to the beginning of the attack animation, almost immediately after the move text first appears, while some, like Hyper Beam, take much longer. Hyper Beam actually takes almost 4 seconds from the time the move text is displayed until the yellow flash appears. So that's a long time. That's a long time for you to prepare, it's a long time for you to attack a little bit more, but you do get plenty of warning for an attack like Hyper Beam, so it's a lot easier to dodge. For Body Slam, on the other hand, the move text appears 0.4 seconds before the warning flash. So a lot of times you might not even see the move text saying Snorlax used Body Slam, because there's already a message for either super effective or not very effective damage showing there. Game Press has a great infographic that shows you visually where that yellow flash appears for every move. So let's just take a look at that and see which relevant moves are hardest to dodge. Like I said, Body Slam, very difficult to dodge. That yellow flash appears just 0.4 seconds after the move text. Dragon Claw is quick also at 0.5 seconds. Stone Edge is another quick one, 0.7. Hydro Pump is actually pretty quick at 0.8. And beyond that, things get a little bit easier to dodge. With at least one second of warning time, it's pretty easy to see an attack coming because you'll notice that that defender stops attacking, stops using its quick attack when you expect it to. So if it takes a little bit longer than normal for that quick attack to appear, that's a good indication that a charge move is coming. Now beyond just timing, some moves are harder to dodge because of their animation. Earthquake and Blizzard are two that come to mind immediately. Earthquake's ground animation sort of covers up the yellow flash, but you can kind of base your timing on that ground animation, and Blizzard, long thought to be undodgeable, actually is dodgeable, and that yellow flash appears just after the big iceberg appears on your Pokemon. It's hard to see, the iceberg sort of covers up half of the yellow flash, so Blizzard is a little bit more difficult to dodge, and I know a lot of people still struggle with it. So all that is to say that you can't rank defensive Pokemon based on moveset, based on DPS, based on defensive stats alone. There's a lot that needs to be taken into consideration. The guys at Game Press have come up with a pretty good tier list for defenders that ranks them based on all of these factors combined. And I agree with most of it, but there are a few things that I want to point out. According to Game Press's tier list, tier 1, that's the top tier, best defenders, is Snorlax and Lapras. And I agree 100% with that. Snorlax and Lapras are two of the tankiest Pokemon in the game, and they don't have any real efficient counters. There's no one Pokemon that really beats them efficiently and quickly. So they take a long time to kill, and because of that, they're going to deal a lot of damage back while they're still alive. And they also list moves with them, so for Snorlax, you want Zen Headbutt with either Hyper Beam or Body Slam, and for Lapras, you want Ice Shard with either Blizzard or Ice Beam. So hands down, the best defenders are Snorlax and Lapras. Snorlax is probably a little bit better because it does have higher CP, and it gets higher placement in gyms. Now, moving on to tier 1.5, or the second best tier of defenders, 
you have Exeggutor with Confusion and either Psychic or Seed Bomb. Again, because Solar Beam is so easy to dodge, you do get a lot of warning for that. Psychic and Seed Bomb are going to happen much more frequently and are a little bit more difficult to see coming and therefore harder to dodge. In this tier, you also have Dragonite with Steel Wing and Dragon Pulse. You have Omastar with Rock Throw and Rock Slide, which is one that I actually don't agree with because Omastar has a double weakness to Grass. A good Grass attacker is a little more common than a good Ice attacker, so I think Omastar should be tier 2 at best. I do think it's a good defender, I just don't think it's tier 1.5. And then finally, in this tier, you have Vaporeon with Water Gun Water Pulse or Aqua Tail. And that's one that really needs no explanation. Vaporeon has some of the highest CP in the game. It also has some of the highest defensive stats in the game, so it's going to survive a very long time, even though some electric types like Jolteon did get buffed with this most recent update. In tier 2, you have Venusaur with Razor Leaf and Sludge Bomb, and again, even though Solar Beam does deal higher DPS than Sludge Bomb, it's a lot easier to dodge, so Sludge Bomb comes out ahead here. Petal Blizzard also does actually have higher defensive DPS than Sludge Bomb, but I think for defenders, it's a lot better to have two different types of moves, because you don't choose the Pokemon that you're going to be battling against. It's better to sometimes have options. You also want to consider the type of Pokemon people are going to be using against your defender. So against Venusaur, you're probably going to see a lot of fire types who resist grass, so in that case, Sludge Bomb is better than Petal Blizzard. You also have Polyrath with Bubble and any of its charge moves. Bubble is a very strong quick attack. It deals 25 base damage and it has a long animation, so it sort of feels like a charge attack and it takes a huge chunk out of your health every time it hits. In tier 2, we also finally see Rhydon. Its best listed moveset is Mud Slap and Stone Edge. Mud Slap and Earthquake could be just as good, considering Earthquake is difficult to dodge, but remember, that's two moves of the same type, and you kind of want to diversify here. It's not super likely, but someone could use an Ice type attacker against Rhydon, against which Stone Edge is going to be super effective, while Earthquake is not. And to round out this tier, we also have Slowbro with Confusion and Psychic. That is two moves of the same type, but they both have pretty high defensive DPS, and they're both going to be super effective against some common Grass-type attackers who people might be using against Slowbro. That's Venusaur, Victory Bell, Vileplume, because they all share Poison typing as well. In tier 2.5, you see Gyarados with Dragon Breath or Bite and Dragon Pulse. Gyarados, despite being one of the surprisingly tankiest Pokémon in the game, is a little bit lower on the defender tier list because Bite really isn't that strong defensively. And if you're lucky enough to have a legacy Gyarados with Dragon Breath, Dragon Breath is only super effective against Dragon, which is not a common type that's going to be facing Gyarados. Plus it has a crippling double weakness to Electric, and with Jolteon's recent buff, that makes Gyarados a little bit worse of a defender. You also have Kangaskhan with Mudslap and Stomp, which makes it the best region exclusive Pokemon to place in gyms if you're lucky enough to have traveled to Australia recently. So if you want to show off a little bit and have a decent defender, Kangaskhan is a pretty good choice. And then down here in tier 3 we have Hypno with Confusion and Psychic or Psyshock. And I want to say Hypno is actually a pretty good defender because of its confusing attack animation. You'll see that attack animation start before it actually starts using Confusion, and that actually tricks me a lot of times, especially because I don't see Hypno too commonly here. I haven't had a lot of time to sort of acclimate to that. So if you try to dodge when you see Hypno's animation start, you'll actually miss time to dodge and you'll miss your opportunity to dodge and take that full damage from Confusion, which actually hits pretty hard on defense. You also have Wigglytuff with Pound or Faint Attack and Play Rough. Cloyster with Ice Shard and Blizzard or Hydro Pump. Cloyster has the highest defense stat in the game, but relatively low HP, which explains its much lower placement here. Especially compared to Lapras, which has the same typing and some of the same moves, Cloyster is a lot less efficient because it's going to faint quicker. You have Tentacruel with Poison Jab and Hydro Pump or Blizzard, Clefable with Pound or Zen Headbutt and Dazzling Gleam, Golem with Mud Slap Stone Edge or Rock Throw Earthquake. Again, those are two movesets with both different types of moves. You don't see Rock Throw Stone Edge or Mud Slap Earthquake listed here. Again, for diversity against possible attacking Pokemon. And finally, Alakazam with Confusion and Psychic. Even though Alakazam is really fragile, it has pretty low defense and HP, it deals a ton of damage with Confusion and Psychic as a defender. And then finally, in the question mark tier, you have Chansey with Pound and Hyper Beam. Chansey is the tankiest Pokemon in the game. It's going to survive the longest in battle, 
but it makes for very low placement in gyms because it has low CP, and like Game Press states here, it's actually very difficult to prestige against. So it's not a good Pokemon to place at the bottom of a gym unless that gym is already maxed out and at level 10. If you were going around building up gyms with a team, it could be smart to place a lot of chances at the bottom of that gym once you've built it up because that could make for good stalling tactics, it could make people take a very long time to beat that gym, and it would be very discouraging, and there's a lot of risk of running out of time. So Chansey is a good defender if you're working with a team. So that's it for defenders. That's Game Press's tier list, which I agree with for the most part. I'll link to that and the dodging information in the description, so check that out if you want to research, if you want to read up more. But remember, a lot of this can change depending on your location, depending on what Pokemon are common for you. If you're somewhere where, for whatever reason, Vaporeon is not very common and Grass is not very common, Rhydon is actually going to be a better defender. So just pay attention to the Pokemon that are common for you, see what you have a lot of, and keep that in mind when you're choosing which Pokemon to place in gyms. And remember, a determined attacker is going to take down a gym no matter what. The attacker has a huge advantage when battling. So sometimes it might just be best to place your highest CP Pokemon in the gym and be done with it, because it might not stay there for very long. So that's it. Check your Pokemon, power up some good defenders, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.